So over the last two years during the pandemic, I've lived in seven different cities, if you can believe it. Uh, probably close to a dozen homes now. One thing I've noticed when I've negotiated all of these uh, leases is that I always want to you always want to haggle something, even if you don't get it. And the reason is that if you haggle and uh, you don't get what you want, you still get something out of it. I learned this the hard way when I was living in Wallace, Idaho. Um, I had asked about um, I, I had an Airbnb that I had stayed in one time many years before I finally moved in during the pandemic. I think it was 2018. I had traveled to Wallace to view a stargazing event and I had stayed in that Airbnb. But this time I wanted to negotiate something for a number of months. And so I negotiated a month to month lease, but I failed to haggle on anything. And so. Um, Long story short, I ended up staying there for, uh, you guys saw, two and a half months. But the owner said that the place would be busy with ski season and she wouldn't be able to renew it. And I think the problem was that when I took it without hesitating at all, she probably sensed she left a lot of money on the table, I, I in retrospect at least. Um, so I paid 700 a month. Had I even haggled, could you do 650? No, I can't. And I paid the 700 I think it may have turned out a little bit better. It might have been more expensive during the ski season for sure. But I think uh, we might have been able to work something out. And so I make it a habit to always haggle something. Uh, the, uh, haggle a few bucks, haggle the deposit, you know. Especially if I haggle the deposit, I can show people that I'm good for it, right? With my uh, credit history and all that. Which is not a bad idea to, to show anyway. Haggle... Um, even just the conditions for it. I had a problem with my last landlord in Mercer Island. He had, he's a newly empty nester, let's put it that way. His wife actually works in a different city. And um, he probably treats me like an extended family member, especially as a child, right? And long story short, that's not how I like to live my life and that didn't work out. I, I wish I had pushed back a little bit more. At the time I was also dealing with workplace stresses and I kind of felt like I needed a place to unwind and and, and so I probably didn't handle that the best that I could. Now I had a tutoring client who uh, he's only uh, 15 years old and he understands this concept already which goes to show uh, we, we all could learn something. So um, I'm doing. I'm still doing remote teaching at the university where I'm working at. I have some clients who are also remote. I really hate having gaps in my schedule. The reason being that um, I want to get everything done as quickly as I can. I, I really can't do much if there's like a half an hour, one hour gap. It's not long enough for me to go out to take a walk on the trails. I do intermittent fasting now. Before, I, I might have used that for a meal break. But nowadays that I'm fasting 16 hours a day, sometimes more... I really hate having gaps in my workday. I really do. And um, so I, I do, uh, I had a lecture from 6 to 9 at the university. I was hoping to get the student from 5 to 6. And I had a feel, when I told the student, okay, let, um, do you, let's do this Friday, need to 5 o'clock. And he hesitates for like two seconds, goes, could you do 4.30? I had a feeling he could do 5. He preferred 4.30 for some reason. And I told him I couldn't do it without really giving much of a reason. I was I was prepared to relent if he couldn't do it either, but I didn't really give him a reason. He did it at 5. And so uh, I, I, after I hung up the Zoom meeting, I, I, I immediately went, I wish I, I, I knew how to do that when I was 15. And so uh, glad I could see that in action.